I know you guys are just as excited as I am to get to today's video. But before we do that though, this section of the video is sponsored by Xness. Xness really just flexed on all of the brokers in the game recently. www.financemagnets.com put Xness as broker number one over all of its competitors. And when you look at their trading volume, it's not that hard to understand. For the month of October, Xness reached over $1 trillion in trading volume. What I find even more impressive is that they have had 234,559 active clients for the month of October and that is quite huge. And for the third quarter of the year, July to September, they paid out over $470 million in client withdrawals. Please go and revert that to rent to see how much it is. Now when you're done, ask yourself. If Xness is out here dishing out money like this, why aren't you getting a piece of the pie? Find the link in my description and sign up for an account today. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new podcast episode. I know this is episode two and I know I've been dragging this episode for so long, but I just haven't had time to come and sit down for a nice couple of minutes, man, and just sit and talk with you all. Because there are a lot of things that's been going on in my personal life, in my business life. Um, and yeah, I've just been trying to get ahead of it all. But I'm back, second episode, as you guys have seen by the title. There's a whole lot of uh, things that's going to be happening in this episode and a whole lot of things that's going to be talked about in this episode. And um, yeah, I'm not going to waste any time. So let's jump into the first topic. So obviously I've been alerted to this live that Jason Noah made where um, he was basically telling someone that if he finds me, he will like beat me up so hard and I'm going to see and all of that stuff. And it was like, you know, showing his muscles and all of that, right? And at first, when um, someone sent it to me, because they were like, yo, bro, did you see this? I was really angry, man. Like, why would you, why would you challenge me like that, man? Why would you challenge me so publicly, knowing that I have anger issues? Like, at that point, I just wanted to step his face into the dirt, right? But as time went on, I thought to myself, right, oh? You must not a light anymore. You must not a high school anymore. You a grown adult now. You are taking care of a whole house. You are running a whole family. You are raising a whole daughter. And going into fights is more something that isn't seen as parent-like behavior. Now, I don't care what people think or say about me because at the end of the day, I'm still going to be me. Let me just... See if I can fix this light a little bit. Bring it closer. And I've never been one to like shy away from a fight and stuff, no? But I was just a little bit disappointed at the end, man. Because Jason's whole thing was I'm coming online to come and tarnish people's reputation and I'm only coming to talk bad about them and I'm only coming to like tarnish them and stuff like that which if you've done stuff and I've exposed you obviously you're gonna feel like that um but at the end of the day that isn't that that isn't my goal at all my goal is like people was checking and jason is one of them he's checking that i'm not adding any positive value into this industry but i believe the positive value that i'm bringing is making people aware of who is a scam and who is not and the only thing that you as a mentor you as a signal provider you as an account manager you as a robot seller need to do is not be a scam and i won't talk about you you shouldn't take my and run off with people's money and then not take accountability for it because it's literally not gonna work like that the positivity that the positivity that i pour into the industry is this exposing so that people know exactly who to avoid because times are tough and there's no way that we should be in an industry where people is making their lifestyles of the hardships 
of other people like i spoke about it the other day in a video and this is gonna make perfect sense to you guys now i recently read an article where um and the article was not how really biased towards uh, um house help and it said that the helpers will now be really glad that the minimum wage of south africa has been raised to three thousand seven hundred rand now take into consideration that it is the minimum wage for south africa no? not just for um the house help right so if the minimum wage in south africa is three thousand seven hundred rand how are we gonna sit here and allow the poorest of the poor people because if you look at it this way and to be real um it's on record it can be checked at any single time 3700 is what i used to pay at spur when i worked extra shifts my salary normally came out 2100 2700 rand at max but then i would also have told some of my colleagues okay you can be off i'll work that shift for you you can be off i'll work that shift for you and the things that actually saved me in waitering was the tips but that's not the point the point here is that if if that is our minimum wage right if that is our minimum salary that people can earn why are we having scare mentors that's charging three thousand rand two thousand five hundred some even four five six seven eight nine ten thousand rand when when our when the poorest of the poor can't even afford that and then on top of that they can't benefit from it after they've paid it like that is that is the gag of it all like people are constantly saying oh but you went to school and you never um you're not using what you are what you have been taught and, and stuff like that guys when you're in school you do literally do not think a specific way if i can rewind time sitting with my experience uh, my academic experience that i have right now i would go the route of having accounting having economics i went the route of having physics of having biology geography maths that was my subject if i was smart at that time and not followed friends i would have gone the route of accounting and economics because that is where i'm at right now and people can never tell me that you're not using what you've learned in school outside of school not too long ago some of you that's watching this channel have been my classmates on borland but i went to borland and even in the colored community borland is being sighed upon right because it's a college you it's not seen as 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 um as this fancy institution where when you're done you will go and um get work immediately and stuff now i didn't get work with what i um i studied right but what i studied is helping me bring this message across on youtube because when i look at the subjects i had right obviously there's accounting in business management but um i had communication shout out to miss lee i had communication and this is the only way that i can communicate so well with you guys um we had um marketing that is the only reason why i can make such compelling ads for xness and for whichever company is going to come and sponsor me after xness so whatever i've studied i'm using i'm using so it's just a matter of um you not making a comparison to school that's being accredited and schooling that's being accredited through various bodies to forex mentorship because the sense there isn't sensing fsca doesn't look out for for traders the way the sec does the way consob does for italians do you know what i'm saying so these industries where mentorship is involved no this is highly unregulated in south africa highly unregulated you will find mentors that 
and I'm not spitting. Look here, this is what you guys mustn't think I'm doing. You guys mustn't think that I'm spitting on mentors when I'm saying this. But let 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 the facts be the facts, because most of the mentors that's out there, their courses aren't accredited by anyone or anything. Their courses are backed up by what they say their courses are backed up with. And very often, it's the success stories of their clients. Now, I'm not spitting on any of that. I'm not doubting any of that. I'm not downing any of that. But let the facts be facts. Is your course accredited, Jason? No. Is, let me rather ask it like this. Any mentor here, yeah, any mentor, is your course accredited by the FECA or by an institution that gives accreditation to educational institutions? I'll wait. My comment section is always open. And if you are, I will gladly interview you. I will have an interview with Rolio Jack soon again. And the reason why I say is again, because previously we had an interview and he wasn't FCA regulated as a service provider. And he is FCA regulated now to give services. So for me, it's if he can do it, anyone can. If he can do it, anyone can. That is my thing. And there's cats that's been in this industry way longer than Rolio Jack has been. And I'm not saying this because, like, no, I won't even call Rolio Jack and myself friends to that extent because we've never, the only time that we've seen each other was on that Skype interview that I've posted on my channel. You guys can go and check it out. That's the only time that I've seen Rolio Jack, like personally. Other than that, we've just been chatting through phones and not even that often. But the point that I'm trying to make here is if Rolio Jack can get himself accredited by the FSA, anyone else can, you yeah. The doors are not closed or the doors is not limited for anyone you are just the one that they have to put in the effort that's all like if i have to put it like this now no you guys can say of justin paulson whatever you want to he's a he's a very smart guy no for him to be op for, for him to have been open ah, for him sorry for him to have been able to open jp markets he had to go write some some tests and he had to go through real uh, um, testing to see if he, him and his company is fit to run a brokerage, right? And I'm not saying that he's now the best and all of that because when you look at JP Markets, JP Markets was regulated by the FCA at one point. I think it's... I'm, I'm not sure if it was at one point or all the time, but the other thing that was also really insane is that you are now finding like DJ Coach. DJ Coach had HD markets, right? Apparently it was his. And then um, didn't he open a new, a new brokerage? I think he opened a new brokerage. Which exams did he go right what qualifications does he hold what's the what degree does he have do you guys know what i'm saying we must start doing things like that you look into the individual because the individual will tell you if you can trust this business or not and i'm not gonna shit on fx goats i'm not gonna be condescending towards them i'm not gonna down their hustle because everyone wants to have it the way they are having it right but i am gonna ask which exams did you write through through which validation process did you go to be able to open up your brokerage are you fca regulated do you guys check what i'm saying what qualifications do you hold to be able to tell me that you are capable of managing or safeguarding the amount of money that's coming your way. Just a question. It's not downing anyone. 
But do you guys check what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, when it comes to being positive and being... it's That isn't even the case because I don't wake up and think, Oh, how can I be negative today? No, I don't. Things happen that make me have to come and sit here and report on the negativity in this industry. And as cool as I might have talked about Justin Paulson now, he also faced the long arm of the FSA due to him also not being licensed in the correct way. And then the other thing on that also was that there's a whole lot of other brokers here in South Africa that isn't regulated to do these things. How are we? Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm even going to steer away from putting blame on the scammers now. How are we as South Africans allowing this to go on? How are we constantly signing up to scams? How? So, when it comes to, like, I understand the need for me to try and be positive, no? And I have forever been wanting to come here and just give you guys good news for a change. But if there isn't good news that's happening in the forex industry, what can I come and talk about? And also the other thing is, these are a lot of things that is truth that I've brought forth that a lot of you guys didn't know because there's a whole lot of people with big channels and big influence that don't that don't touch on this. They have the information, but they would rather choose out choose to put out the image where it seems like, oh, this person hasn't scammed a day in his life or he didn't do his clients wrong or you get what I'm saying. So I'm literally just here to where everyone is just showing the one side, I'm the one coming to talk about the other side that no one wants to talk about. And I'm always going to be here. And like I just said now, um, before I go to the next topic, like, like I just said now, Jason, if you're watching, I'm pretty sure you're watching. You, you said that you like my content, so I'm thinking that you are watching. But if you are watching me, bro, I invite you... I invite you to a debate. Not going to get violent, not going to get threatening because as adults, we are supposed to get past that. I'm not going to meet you with that same energy, but what I'm also going to say is I'm not the push. And if you do see me and you act off, it's going to be tough for you. That's all I'm going to say. But at the end of the day, I'm inviting you so that it doesn't have to go there. Like, I'm cool with it if it goes there, but it doesn't have to go there. So, like I said, I'm inviting you to a debate and it's not going to be public where we do it on Instagram and we can be veered off by the disrespectful comments that's constantly going to come through. I would like for us to do it on a privately recorded Skype call and then I'll post that just like that, unfiltered, no editing, no nothing. I invite you, my bro. And this same invitation that I'm extending to you, Jason, I'm extending to every single Forex trader that I've spoken about, that I'm yet to speak about. I'm inviting you guys. I'm not even challenging you guys. I'm inviting you guys. And the invitation isn't as in to, oh, come and talk about the good that you've done because we are not here to do PR stunts. I'm, the moment I catch on that you're doing a PR stunt, I will cut that call short. But the point here is that if you do good, right, and you have done good, then you will not keep up with people that does bad and do bad things the same you know there's a saying that goes and i'm i, I know for a fact that you guys know the saying and have used the saying as well if you chill with five millionaires you will most you will most definitely become the sixth one if you chill 
with five scammers. You almost definitely become the sixth one. So for the guys out there, like with a clean image, don't just rub shoulders with anyone simply because they have clout. Clout means nothing. Clout can't pay the bills. Clout can't feed your family. Cloud can't keep a roof over your head. Can it? No. So, be careful out there. Before, uh, once again, before I jump to the next topic, Jason Noah, I'm inviting you. Let's have a conversation like two adult men. And, um, yeah, it, uh, if you see me, you can keep it whichever way you keep it. Just expect whatever you can expect. But at the end of the day, um, let's have a conversation, bruh. Because I feel like you are totally misunderstanding the purpose of this channel. Because purpose, the purpose of this channel was never to tarnish any, anyone. It's just to bring out the truth about everything. Like, to be honest now, to be honest now, no? just, just, just as, a, as, a, as an example, my brother Jason. We know Ref Wayne had Popcoin, right? Popcoin is done and dusted. There's nothing we can do about Popcoin. No one can still be saved. Popcoin is clear. But my point is, go onto my channel and you will see how Ref Wayne threatened me. How he threatened my family. How he threatened my unborn children. My daughter wasn't even born at the time. But just check how he threatened me at me hinting I'm going to talk about Popcoin. The spiritual stuff that he was sending. The, the, and it's just witchcraft. It's literally just witchcraft. Now, is this the same person that the newspapers are talking about? The news articles that he's paid for? That, that he's paid for? And I can actually take you to articles where the publications at the end of Ref Wayne articles are saying... There's a disclaimer that almost it's like they haven't written, they haven't written this article. I can take you... They didn't wrote this. They didn't write this article. Sorry, I can take. Sorry, I'm just getting a little bit excited. There. I can take you there, but especially those Bloomberg ones. But um, my thing is just if he's done good, if he's been good all along, why popcorn? Because obviously now people won't still remember what good he did. People want to know about Popcoin now. And Popcoin just disappeared. The value of Popcoin just dropped after he sold these tokens for 100 Rand. The value just dropped. So, now I ask you, Jason. After me talking about it, you know, what positive do I have to talk about when Rev Wayne has given me threats? He has given my family threats. He has given my unborn children threats. Like threats on threats. And it's not text threats. It's voice note threats. Go and check out that video, my bro. What positive do I have to write about someone that is seemingly positive to the public eye? Nothing, my bro. So, once again, I'm inviting you. Like I'm inviting any other mentor that is watching this for a conversation. Any other mentor, doesn't matter if I've spoken about you, doesn't matter if I haven't spoken about you, and even if we get on the call and you want to swear me out, you can swear me out, I won't get angry, I am busy going um, going to places for my anger management, you don't need to worry about that, I won't, I, I, I won't even stress back, because when you are done swearing and you are done taking that load, that angry, I'm angry at Rydal load off you, I'm still going to ask you, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? That question is still going to remain. So I'm inviting any and everyone to come and have an unfiltered talk with me. DJ Coach, um, John Gatti, um, I just won't have Damus on my channel. That's one person that I, I won't. The way he has disrespected my mother, I won't. He has something coming for him. But... All, if, if, everyone, everyone, I'm inviting you guys. Now, 
I think I've I'm ready to move on to the next um, topic now. We have spoken 23 minutes on this. Um, and the next topic is wow, FX Code started a new brokerage. Damn, I didn't even see that one. So yeah, you guys have probably heard. <sighs> You see, I can't move according to schedule. Everything is here and I just move off the top of my head because I know what I want to say and my feelings won't ever change about shit. Um, but um, FX Gold have started a new uh, brokerage. You guys have seen that. And for me, I, st I have the basic questions. Why now? How now? Are you guys qualified to do this? And when I say qualified, I mean, do you guys have degrees to do this? Um, are you guys FCA regulated? Are you guys A book, B book? Do you trade against your clients? You know, normal things. It's, it's normal questions. And only after that will I decide if I... And it's not that I'm now wanting to find something shitty, but... If I'm going to sign up to something and I'm going to put my money there, I'm going to want to know that my money is with the right people and it's safe with the right people. I'm not just going to go off here the fact that, oh, they have so many followers and they are so esteemed in the buzz. No, no, no. We must look past reputations. We must start looking at what does the facts say, not what does public perception say. So when it comes to FX Goat and their new brokerage, um, well done, congratulations. Like I said, you guys are doing it the way no one else has been doing it. And to be real, once again, when I say FX Goat, I'm just talking about the twins because they were the only ones that I knew when I came in the game as FX Goats. Um, the others came along, but obviously this congratulations is a team effort because they got there as a team, I guess. But um, yeah, and I'm not saying you can't have many hassles, right? But people are now going to worry. What is going to take you guys is priority or how your priority list is gonna look like um are you guys a trader first are you a ceo of a brokerage first are you a rapper first because obviously they've been dabbling in music as well so these this is the stuff that you know the public are kind of pondering on and like i said the invitation is like out there for anyone and everyone not just for Jason Noah. It's out there for any and everyone. So if it goes, if you guys feel like you guys want to have a conversation and is ready for a conversation, let me know. We can do it over Skype. But at the end of the day, um, when it comes to starting a brokerage, guys, I would like for you guys, and you know, I'm just one person, and you don't need to listen to me. I'm not even that significant even that you need to listen to me. But one thing that I would like to tell you guys no, is that with the making of this brokerage, no, when you set up your terms and your conditions, please have your users in mind. Please have your clients in mind because... Um, if it has to come to organizations or companies, when it comes to Forex, you guys have the biggest pool. After you, it's obviously most now um, DJ Coach and Lasiba, Riff Wayne, Jason Nawa and them. But you guys are like in front. So please, man, take care of the... This is something that that you guys i think you guys should know this as business people you do most probably know this from a business perspective if you look after your client your client will constantly come back if you give your traders nice conditions and the thing is you guys were traders first before broker owners so i'm hoping i haven't checked out your brokerage yet um 
and this is actually me giving you the heads up that i am gonna open an account with your brokerage you guys know what i do by now so a review of your brokerage is coming but i hope you guys started this broker out of a point of a trader from a trader's perspective and i'm not saying you guys should just it should just be beneficial to the trader because at the end of the day the point of setting up a business is to make money doesn't matter which business it is whether it's a broker whether it is a little spa or shop it doesn't matter the point of opening a business is to make money but what i please ask of you guys is to please hold the south african public in consideration when you're making this broker guys and this isn't meant negative in any way but i'm scutting i'm thinking that you guys white labeled your broker which is no there's no please understand this there's no disgrace in that there's no embarrassment or humiliation in that but one thing that i do want to let you guys or ask you guys because i can't tell you what to do i can just ask i can't tell you what to do but one thing that i am asking of you guys is to please the guys that you're white labeling from ask them to take the south african public in consideration because you guys know and let me tell you this no you guys might think and there's a whole lot of people no i'm not even talking to the fx goats alone now there's a whole lot of people that thinks with a shallow mindset when you guys go to the wood with your eyes and your fancy cars and all that no people don't go on for the cause let me tell you guys that now they don't go on for the cause they go on because someone like them is driving that car someone they've maybe seen in a taxi a few years ago is driving that mercedes benz now they're driving that audi they're driving that bm they are feeling inspired because they are seeing another black man excel to the level that they want to excel that is why they are going on for you guys just call like that i mean for those of you who follow me on instagram you guys would know this because i jokingly joked about it but i recently bought myself my very first car it is a mark one a golf mark one and the moment i i could drive you know it was to the other people that's around me like hey i must get look 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 at Rydal. Rydal is starting to drive now i must get my things in order because i also want to drive now you know what i'm saying that is the thing my friends have been coming here with the expensive cars all along you'd come here you'd you'd find tsis in front of my house golf fives bms my friends stick it but the moment you do that and you go in your wood obviously this gonna and would you guys believe this i can't believe this this there's still people that's je jealous towards me and i drive the cuckest car that you can drive um, a mark one that is the cuckest car and i'm not even scapping i'm not looking down on my car or and or anything but you can literally buy a mark one for anything from ten thousand rand i got mine mine is very neat looking it's very beautiful shout out to kurt um for keeping this car in tip top shape but i have a very beautiful car i must say this but the point is this car was so cheap and people are still like paper in the car and I'm, I'm it's it's so funny but anyway that's not the it is, isn't the point the point here is the people that you're inspiring you are inspiring people the same people like you that come from the very same woods that you guys are coming i don't even know your history i don't know if you even come from the wood but whenever you go to the wood there's love for you and it's all because you excelled to the level that they are wishing they can excel so if it's go and i'll be guys i'll be fucking real if that broke is fca regulated i don't mind pushing it 
if that broker really has its clients at the forefront of its dealings, I will most definitely push that broker. But up until then, the only thing that I can do about I'm not even criticizing it. I'm just like sometimes coming here to ask very solid questions. But like I said, FX Goat, please keep the larger South African public in mind, my bro. You guys have been traders. You guys know how unfair brokers can sometimes be towards us. So, yeah. And obviously, on the other end, I must also say this. You guys know what I do. You know my job. And... um. And you guys know, even since last year, it isn't now that Jason is challenging me to do this, but even since last year already, I did say I want to come out with content that has a positive vibe to it, right? So, I want to start pushing out more, more like positive things. So, if you don't, if, if, if it's going to end up like a scam and, and, and seem like a scam and like, I have to be honest, I will come and criticize you guys. And it's going to be real harder on you guys as the FX goats because you guys have been traders. You guys still are traders. So that's at this point, that is literally all I can say. You guys have my congratulations because like I said, there's a lot of people in this industry that wants to live like you, that wants to have it like you guys. But with you guys having all of these eyes on you, I really feel like you guys should put your best foot forward and especially with this broker especially with this broker because if you guys like just look at it this way we know that majority of the brokers don't treat south africans right because they still think that we are dumb and we don't know what's happening right and if you just change that the game will most definitely change so yeah congratulations on starting your new venture and with that, I'm also watching you guys for any slip-ups. The next, the next topic that I want to touch is <laughs> the richest forex trader in South Africa. Guys, we will never know who the richest tra forex trader in South Africa is because no one is, no one should actually be that transparent with their finances because obviously that just invites unwanted attention and unnecessary uh, bad vibes. But seeing that there's someone that don't mind this, the richest forex trader, and I have to say this in South Africa, or at least on Instagram in South Africa, is Demo Operandi. I want you guys to give Demo Operandi. Demo Operandi has won the award of the richest trader in South Africa for 2021. Not only has Demo Operandi showed real trading skills, but Demo Operandi has also shown a various of his Demo clients' progress. So, when it comes to Demo Operandi and the billions, the, like, it's it's not even 20, we're not even mid-year yet, but this guy has made a lot of billions. So, to Demo Operandi, shout out to you. I know you can in poverty. In poverty for all of us, my bro. Buy out Cerro Ramaphosa and take over South Africa, my bro. You have the money, my bro, Demo Operandi. Don't be like that, Aya. Come now, my bro. Come now, Aya. Buy Cerro Ramaphosa out, my bro. And then you see now, and you don't even have to go and look for head of investigation, Aya. You have me, my bro, Demo Operandi. Ow. I think I get one of second. Kijk nou maar. Buy that man out, my bro. We take over South Africa. Can say, my bro. Ow. We have enough money, my bro. We have billions. Ik mean, ma. With all that money, demo operandi, my bro. We most won't need for the Oppenheimers and the Ruperts and the whoever's here in South Africa, my bro. Ow. Take over, my second. My bro. With that same money, my bro. We can somehow go and buy Amazon, aya. They seen take Jeff Bezos off as a as the richest person in the world, my bro. Now you are really stretching your wings, Aya. Don't my bro. 
Yo, we can even buy out Elon Musk with that money, my bro. A match or see how of mass to aya. Got plan to sepa da. Got plan to sepa mass, my bro. Muni so we see. Then we really making space cakes. Muni so we see, my bro. Aya, don't be so. Let's use that money correctly, my bro. Let's use that money correctly. Sydney man, we buy out Sir Ramaphosa, no? we move him to the one side, you take president, my bro, I'll just be there, I'll just be there, head of investigation, investigating anyone, oh, you put the tender through, uh, you're not corrupt enough, you're not there, go, 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 oh, you put in tender through, let me see, let me see, oh, you, ah, you didn't steal enough yet, go, 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 it will work, my bro, I, uh, huh? Then we change the country's name. Mm hmm. To demo Africa, my second. What? My bro. Did you see how much money Sir Ramaphosa is getting from the IFA, IMF, my bro? <whistles> and from the World Bank? <whistles> my bro. <whistles> I and I must tala, my bro. But. You wanna be on Instagram, my bro. You already could have taken over the world. You could have been a South African Batman. Did you know that, my bro? But you playing on Instagram, aya. Nah, man. Nah, man, demo operandi. Yes, so. You could have been the real life Bruce Wayne of South Africa. And you already have the demo jacket, my bro, demo operandi. Ow. The leather jacket, I mean, sorry. Yo. Yo, you also have the glasses, man. I mustn't play. You see how I'm, 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 I'm giving you ideas here? Yo. You see, now you're not making lives anymore. Now you're not making lives anymore. You're doing State of the Nation address now. You're doing sauna now. Huh? You see, my bro. Could have taken South Africa over with that money long ago. They're talking about fees must fall. Hey, guys, we must elect Demo Operandi for president. Demo Operandi for president. That man can eradicate fees must fall just like that in one trade. In one trade. Don't even spray. Demo Operandi will sort out fees must fall. Demo Operandi will pay back Sir Ramaphosa's IMF loan. Demo Operandi can make back what the World Bank gave Sir Ramaphosa in one trade. We must make him president. We have found a new president. Demo Operandi. Viva Demo Operandi. Viva. I'm telling you, you must run for president, my bro. You mustn't play a year. How many billions did you? It's not even half of the year yet. Feb we didn't even start correctly with February yet. Yet you have billions on billions on. My bro. Sure. Guys, if you look at it correctly, you see that trading series, billions. You see Axelrod. Do you know who's Axelrod's inspiration? Demo Parandi. Balians is all time about demo operandi. Meanwhile, you guys are playing here on Instagram, wanting to be famous for Instagram. Yeah. Demo operandi, my bro. You got enough billions. You must buy this country, Aya. This country is for sale. You must buy this country. And when you buy this country, you must raise the sasa. Yeah, even me, I, 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 I will apply there for Sasa. You must raise it. Yeah. You see, you must raise it. So, for me, Temo Parandi, for president, I will vote. Moving on to the next topic. Um, positive versus negatives. I always just wanted to say that. I've always just wanted to come and clash that yeah. The positives versus the negatives. Like, I'm sorry to name names. I'm sorry to use you as an example now. But Ref Wayne, you're being thrown under the bus again. I'm sorry, my bro. Um, all of the positive things that Ref Wayne has done, no? To the people that's been affected 
by Popcoin. Popcoin's happenings wiped out all of the good that they did. Well, and the thing is, guys, you cannot remunerate what happened with your old scams with giving out free signals that don't work because in order for that person to enter that signal they have to do what deposit money into their account and if that signal lose and then then you owe them more money it's as simple as that you guys must stop playing with the people's money sorry i'm i'm going off again i'm going off again you can you can so much see i'm 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 Oh, I'm ready. My tongue is ready to start fighting. But when it comes to positives and negatives, right, guys? What I want to say about that is, if you are a positive person within this industry, you will not keep company with people that scamming. I mean, let's be real. Do you sit with gangsters? And I'll be real now, my mother was a gangster before she passed away. My father been a gangster. My mother's whole family is a gangster. And I don't, or oh, they are gangsters, sorry, but I don't lamb with them because that's not my way of life. That's not my way of life. And that's no shade to them. That's their way of life. Society has pressured them to do whatever they needed to do to survive. And I'm not shading any gangster in any shape or form here. But the point that I'm trying to make here is birds of a feather flock together. You will see gangsters with gangsters. You will see church people with church people. You will see people that love the psychedelic scene moving with each other. You will find people that love the car scene move with each other. So, if you are a positive, I don't see why you should be sitting with negatives. Not even on batteries do positives sit with negatives. They're sitting on opposite ends. So, once again, and this goes out to everyone in the industry. To everyone. Just a question once again. If you are a positive, why are you keeping company with negatives? If you are someone that does good in this industry, why are you sitting with someone that is taking negatively out of this industry, that is scamming people, that is lying to people? Why? Why? Or is it just that we haven't caught on to your scam yet? And, you know, if there's one thing that I can say is that whatever happens in the dark, you know, when it comes to scamming, it will eventually find the light. Some way, somehow, someone will feel compelled one day to be like, nah, this guy's flashiness is getting to me now. He scammed me. And if the evidence points to that, there's nothing I can do. There's literally nothing I can do. I've given scammers on this channel so many chances to do right. So many chances. And the thing is, they keep on ignoring it. It's not that I've, like, even me coming on here, and the thing is, so far, when it comes to reporting people to authorities, this channel stands on zero this channel stands on zero regardless of how many times you guys have reported the channel i've never ever reported anyone to the authorities i've threatened to do so but i've never ever was i in groups where i helped people sure was I in groups where I was the one to give them the information of who to email and who to call? Sure. But have I done it myself? No. And this isn't me pleading for you guys to stop um, reporting my channel. Because at the end of the day, haters is going to do what haters is going to do. People are going to do what they need to do to hide the truth. And reporting my channel is unfortunately one of them.
So, when it comes to the positive versus the negatives, guys, being positive is something that you have to do every single day. Every single day. I mean, even up until now, Michael Jackson never raped those flippant kids. Those two, I can't remember, but the one that was dating his niece, I can't remember his name. He even came out years after to say that um, everything was a lie. He's even till today doing Michael Jackson tribute shows because of lying. So, when it comes to the positives and the negatives, will people remember? that Michael Jackson built many hospitals? Will people remember that Michael Jackson sorted out many uh, charities? Will people remember that Michael Jackson was an actual good person? No! They won't! They won't! All they will remember is that this guy is a rapist. Which he isn't even. And yeah. So, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when it comes to positives versus negatives, if you don't want your positive image ruined, don't do negative things. Because in the case of Michael Jackson, the negative things that were said about him wasn't even true. And it ruined him completely. Yeah, on this channel, I come with provable facts. I come with receipts. So, I come with the truth. So, if you don't want people to see you in a negative light, don't do negative things. It's as simple as that. If you don't want to be seen as a thief, don't go out and steal. If you don't want to be seen as a liar, do not go out and lie. And that is, a, guys, it's literally as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And I don't know how many times with receipts I have to come on here to show you guys things. And I'm never, just, just, just know that this will never ever be a channel that has to rely on my word only. I will always come with receipts and facts that can be backed up. Always. Don't get that must. If I do not have evidence about a certain thing, I won't move with it. Don't get that. Don't, don't get it twisted. Throughout the two years of operating this channel, I got one, I got one video wrong. And I went back and I correctified all of my mistakes. I rect not correctified, sorry, rectified. I rectified all of my mistakes. Everything that I got wrong on that Lasiba video, I rectified. So, after that, when it comes to evidence, my bro, <laughs> there's people that still begging me today to do videos, but they don't even have a proof of payment. And I'm telling you, I won't move without evidence. Ever. Ever. Like Jason is now saying, I'm only talking about the bad things. Is it true or is it not? Did Llewellyn pay? Did he not? Did he go to the Cape Town thing and didn't get what, what he paid for? Did he not? Did he go to wherever you are in Pretoria and not get what he paid for and had to come back? Gave out all that money or not? Did he drive for a third time after you when you had another thing in Cape Town and still didn't get that one-on-one? -on -one or not? And that is the fact. I don't even come here to come and lambaste you guys because there's so many things that I know about you guys. There's so many forex traders out here that is part of the hockey club. And I'm not even going to mention names, but I know who you are. There's so many guys out here that is pretending that they are making their money from Forex. Meanwhile, they are being bent over by older rich men. Y'all didn't know? <laughs> the things I know will shake this industry to its core. And the only reason why I haven't brought it out here is because I choose peace. 
I choose peace. I don't want trouble. I mean, if trouble comes, you know, but I don't want trouble. So I'm not even selling basting you guys because if I wanted to land based you guys, if I wanted to chase for cloud, if I wanted to run to what will get me the most views, I would have put on all of you guys in a video that's busy bending over for older rich men. All of you guys. And all I'm gonna say now is guys, if you want to know who's bending over, look at the ones that is enjoying these uh, um these luxury brands and then also apart from the luxury brands just look at the ones that's constantly taking vacations anyway that is it for today's podcast i think i am outspoken when I say outspoken, I mean I ran through all of the topics. I did speak about Jason Noah that wants to fight me, that I don't want to fight, that I'd rather have a conversation with. Like, who, who's still fighting in 2022? Come now, man. You have a pretty boy face, my bro. Don't mess it up. I've spoken about FX Goat that started the new brokerage. I've spoken about the richest forex trader in South Africa. And then I, sp I leveled a little bit the positives against the negatives and told you guys that if you want to be continue to be seen as a positive, then you must continuously do positive things. Um, anyway, um, next week I will most definitely push for another podcast episode I don't know if I will be able to do it um, as you guys have seen the the delay of this one was kind of forever but when I do it eventually it's a banger you guys can't deny that so I will most definitely see you guys in the next podcast smash that like smash that subscribe leave your comments in the comment section and i'll most definitely get back to you but i will see you guys most definitely in the next video cheers